Alright guys, welcome back to another video. This one's a little overdue. I uh, actually already had this recorded and posted it on one of my fa on uh, the Indian Head Valley Railroad Facebook page, I think it was, somewhere. And that was the one I was going to upload to YouTube and then I was getting ready to upload and I thought, no, I'm going to redo this here. Because track plan has tweaked a bit and there's a couple other things that are different. So. Obviously, the point of this video is to show you the trap plan for Hawking Valley 3.0. So, yes, I know I started building it, which hints why it's late, but I figure better late than never. So, uh, we're going to do a couple different things. We're going to have a look at the track plan, and we're going to have a look at the storage diagram, as well as the master electrical plan. And keep in mind the master electrical has tweaked just a bit, as has the track plan. Um, Rich pointed out a couple things. So, but anyways, let's just go ahead and get into it. So before we actually get to the track plan, though, for those of you who uh, don't know a little bit of uh, background information on the Hawking Valley Railroad itself. Uh, basically, the gist of it is it was a coal hauler chart in the 1860s between uh, Athens and Columbus, Ohio for hauling coal out of the area around Logan in the middle of the Hawking Valley, hence the name. At that point, it wasn't called the Hawking Valley. Um, it was called the... Ah, uh, shoot. Columbus and Hawking Valley. Yeah. I'm, I can't believe I forgot that. Columbus and Hawking Valley, something like that. Um, and basically, they got to Columbus, then they realized that to be financially stable, their best bet was to extend all the way up to Toledo. They extended up to Toledo, Ohio, and it name changed to the Columbus Hawking Valley in Toledo, and then it finally changed to just Hawking Valley. Because at this point, they ran pretty much the whole length um, for their own trackage, and then a partial ownership right trackage with the New York Central for the Kanawha, Michigan. Um, basically that's what's now the Kanawha River Railroad. Actually it was what's now Norfolk Southern and what's now the Kanawha River Railroad. So if you trace Norfolk Southern line from Charleston to past Athens, that's the former Kanawha, Michigan. And you can see the old roadbed on the map where the Hawking joined up with it. The junction, the roadbed at the junction still there. The Hawking Lake is obviously not used. It's the um, Hawking Indiana Bike Trail now, but the bridges are there, so you can trace the bike trail, and that's where it used to be. They also went down to uh, Gallop Gallopolis, I think that's how you pronounce it. Sorry if I'm butchering the name, and then up to Pomeroy, where it joined again. Up to Pomeroy, where it ended. In the process, it joined up with the K and M, went a few miles, and then diverted from the K and M, and went north. Um, the boom was about 1920, then the coal mines started fizzling out. Most of the branches were done by the 70s, with the exception of the Monday Creek. They briefly ran excursions on it. The Athen, the um, Nelsonville to Athens segment turned into a bike trail. Uh, eventually, Logan to Nelsonville became the Hawking Valley Scenic after they finished running on the Monday Creek branch and it was ripped up. CNO bought stock interest in 1920, officially 1910, officially absorbed them in 1920, and uh, everything just kind of went down. 60s, 70s, it was basically Columbus to Logan. It was very, very lightly used, and then they sold it to Indiana and Ohio, and of course now that's part of Genesee and Wyoming. So that's the gist of it. But layout is modeling 1954. It is. Uh, proto freelanced. Um, I went ahead and took a fair hunk of liberties with this. 
Uh, the freight car roster, locomotive roster is going to be accurate. I've got photos, I've got the roster, I've got everything like that. But the rest of this is really just a flavor. Um, because the whole yard area here that's Logan, uh, if you look at track charts, bears no resemblance to the real thing. <laughs> but I can re recreate the flavor of it and that's what I'm going for so uh, that's pretty much the gist of the original history so with that out of the way let's go ahead and get in the track plan all right so first thing um, is staging yard over here and again this the right end is what I'm gonna do the rest of it is not true to accurate because I've got four tracks and I've kept the staging yard module so different ladder but uh, here's your east and west. I'll have four tracks. That does count the main as a staging, so if I keep one as a run through, that's three. I'm just going to use all four. And besides, when I'm showing the layout off, I'll grab a train out of one of the tracks anyways and run it around, so it'll still be clear. Um, so that staging above it is going to be a town at the end of the branch. I'll discuss that in a little bit. But uh, that represents east and west. in the you know wings of the theater and then coming on to the mall portion which we see with the backdrop line right here you punch through the backdrop um you come on sync you are behind this area here which is the end service terminal uh, again this has changed um in all actuality i'll get this up soon but i found a old diamond scale 135 foot turntable a train show for 20 bucks i said what the heck i'm gonna go ahead and get it so i got it so this whole bent this whole turntable here is really basically gonna be in like about here so the position is gonna move over but it's gonna keep the same general arrangement so you've got Basically three stalls to your roundhouse right here. I'm going to be able to have a couple of garden tracks as you can see right here, which is going to be perfect. That is something that I'm going to need. And then of course right here you've got your servicing and then this little midget of a track right there that's flashing black and red uh, is going to be the rip, not rip, the um, mal track maintenance away so that's that um these two turnouts here if you take the air leg on both you do this little piece of track here and that's your continuous um that's your reverser section in actuality that piece of straight track both of these curved turnouts sorry about that folks both of these curved turnouts that whole curve and then the whole ladder back here in staging is all going to be the um, auto reversing section. So uh, that's how that's going to break down. But that gives you just of it. So coming around, uh, we get to the yard area right here. Now, I do want to point out the way I designed this. So the thought is, from this turnout right here, these sections of track allow you to work any of your tracks without fouling the siding or the main. And then you also have a double cross over here. A buddy of mine has a Walter Shinohara Code A3 single crossover, the prefabricated piece from back in the day. So I'm going to probably slip that in there. Um, I even, I'm pretty sure it's even the right, uh, the a right hand, which is what I want. But you can switch to the yard and you have a train come on the siding because of this crossover here. And have the main clear. So basically you can have three movements at once. You have a multiple versions of three movements. You can have somebody switching the yard right here, have a train passing you have somebody switching the yard, have an engine backing out of the engine terminal to get ready to couple onto a train, and have a through freight come through and take the siding and then use the crossover right here 
to worm its way between the locomotive movement on the main and the switch doing its thing. Um, and you'll notice the lead is nearly as long as one of the body tracks, so that takes care of that little gem. Um, oops, how I the length. <laughs> okay, so, and just do plenty of um, flexibility in that, which is what I'm going for. Now, this whole area back here is going to be town, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, so the whole idea for this section back here is like I said, put it on a slope and have the buildings at slightly different heights. Um, the siding is the inner track on a loop right here, and the um, main is your, the hour one is your main, obviously, and then this turn out here, again, this is another one of the operational parts. When you're coming in, it allows you to bring your train into the siding and you have a pocket right here on your train to move the motive power and the first three or four cars up. They can park right here and then the switcher can just move down the yard ladder, take this little connector curve right here, grab the inbound cars, put the outbound cars on, and then the train just power just backs up to the rest of its train and it heads out through the siding and through this crossover right here while you're starting to switch the yard. Obviously that crossover also allows if you have a really, really long one, you can just um what was I gonna say? Uh, you can use just the yard lead as the rest of the sign if you need to. So that's how that works. This whole area well, okay. This whole side right here uh, is going to be scenery, with the exception of the spur right here in this area that's currently highlighted, which is going to be a pulpwood. Originally I had that as a coal mine, but I'm going to have a coal mine and some truck dumps at the end of the branch, uh, and I did want a place to send pulpwood flats. Um, the 4x8 have way too much of one town on it. I want distance. In other words, when you're over here in Logan, if you have a train over here in Logan, I don't want it to have the caboose leaving Logan over here as you're coming into Nelsonville over here. So having basically this whole side scenery, it gives you something, some pop when you come in. but it also gives you the distance and feeling of isolation and separation. Um, and that's just one of the things in general. This is the second time around with the layout and this time around I'm trying to pay a lot more attention to the aesthetics and the lighting as well. Which is part of the reason I'm going for day to night transitions with the Arduino and whatnot. Uh, so you come around, you've got your turnout here that goes to the spur for the pulp wood. you got your reverser. Um, this will probably be disguised as this part of the reversing will probably be disguised as a very, 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 very uh, beat up and disused track. Um, operationally, I'm probably just going to have it as a storage track for the pulpwood industry. Just a place to stick cars while you're switching it or put extra cars, something like that. Not necessarily listed on the in JMRI as a spur, just this extra track. And I'll just pretend the backstory is it's an abandoned branch or abandoned spur or something like that. Uh, but when I'm display running, I'll just move the cars off and then when I want to reverse the train, I can either just go straight through it or back the train up through it just depending on, you know, which direction the train is. I would have liked to have been able to have done this in such a way that I could just reverse it either direction with going forward, but it would have taken up too much space, it would have been too much work, it just wouldn't have fit well. 
So again, you get back in the scenery, you come across left out right here, which um, this is going to, well, okay, the curve plus all this in front of the depot in the first turnout um, is all going to be a block. The difference is Um, what was I going to say? Oh yeah, that's all going to be a one block signal wise, but the actual turn back part of the loop, so in other words, this piece right here, that's again flashing black and red, obviously it's going to have to be gapped at where the lift out goes on to the layout, but I'm going to do the trick with the uh, dead, with the safety sections on our side that shut off. So basically borrow a trick from Nolan's uh, and use that little gem. So that's uh, going to be interesting. Um, I might end up designating the sections of track on our side. So like this right here with these two turnouts and straight. And this straight and this turnout down here as individual blocks. Honestly, that should all be one block because you're going from turnout to turnout. You, you're from a junction point to a junction point. But for actually wiring it up. It might be better to cut it off there um, because I do want to have it that when you come into the room you can still work the pulp with spur. Um, over here and if these two turnouts and straight track are part of the cutoff section you're working at somebody comes to get into the layout, lift it out, that cuts off. So, eh, we'll see. Um, but that's the gist. Anyways, you come over here, you get into this town, which is going to stand for Nelsonville, since it was originally where a good, most of the branches split up. You had the Monday Creek, which split off at Nelsonville. And then you had the Snow Fork and the, oh, what was the name of it? A couple of branches that went off of that. And at the end of it, it ended in a Y. And if you went right, you went to New Straitsville, which is the town I'm going to be modeling at the end of this branch. And if you went left, you went to Gore. And then you would basically make a big loop and come back into Logan, um, which was actually how the Straitsville branch went um, in my in the proto freelance history like the real thing uh the actuality they abandoned the straightsville branch fairly early on in favor of running those trains up the monday creek branch so this is going to be nelsonville obviously again this is nothing like the track charts um <laughs> but it's what i want and honestly this is partially inspired by a photo i saw a model railroader on a modular layout it, granted, it was a Midwest, but it's just the way you have the depot here with the mainline track up front, the house track in the back, and a grain elevator beyond, which is the setup he had. So I'll put it in here right now to give the guy credit. This is not my idea, but I loved it enough and wanted to include it. So that's kind of the thought. Um, grain elevator, I might put in our industry maybe in the corner here, maybe over here. Um, don't know yet. Honestly, I kind of had in mind, this is the house track and having it embedded in asphalt like he did and just having this little area here paved. And then it's house track, you know. So you order your house out of Sears and Roebuck like they actually did back in the day and just like back in the day, you drop off a boxcar 
you deliver a house a boxcar a lot of the time, you drop the boxcar off, it gets unloaded, or just say it has it's some LCL, a bunch of packages for four or five different spots, you drop your boxcar off here, the guy unloads it into the depot, or you just park the boxcar, the agent calls up the guy, hey, Mr. Johnson, I got your package, he comes, just turns around on the asphalt lot, backs up to the boxcar door, and unloads the stuff. And then later you come and pick that it up. That is the thought so. with that. And then this area here, I want to go ahead and do buildings. Because that's going to give me a couple things. If you imagine looking down the street right here, on the left you've got a building and then a pair of cross bucks and then some flashers because this is just a spur. You actually probably wouldn't even have cross bucks back then. Just flashers here. And you've got, you know, your asphalt lot here for the depot, and it it's just going to look really, really cool. So, and it'll give me a chance to model something else you don't see very often, which is the back of the building. So, like the, um, oh, I can't remember the name, the name for the electrical components. A uh, row of telephone poles coming down, and you got the wire going off to the buildings, and you got the, you know those round cylindrical cans you see on the poles that are step-down transformers and just you know all the electrical boxes and all the all the all that that's electrical detail on the back of the buildings and an alleyway with the trash cans and that sort of thing which is something you just don't see mom very often because most of the time show the front of the building interiors which i'll still be able to do and still put interiors here but it's the back side model that you don't see very much so I'm really looking forward to that. Um, then coming around, this turnout here, so this turnout, and then the track going off of it. Um, <laughs> that's probably why. Track going off of it is a coal mining branch that is going to be dual mode DC. Yes, folks, it will be dual mode DC. So, and obviously that includes the spur back here. So, and I'll explain the electrical part of it uh, when I get to that diagram. So, other thing to know at this point, clear back over here. When you've got the outer main line on this curve, you start climbing a 1.5% grade. Um, which is going to be fine. I'll go ahead and put in a working hill break or something on this side and keep cars from rolling. Uh, but the place where you will drop them off, the ladder track in the yard right here is going to be flat anyways, as is the whole yard. So, But uh, anyways, at this point the track starts climbing up on the main line at a 1.5% grade. It gets up to here, and then as soon as you get through the verging leg of this turnout, you go down at a 2%. Well, actually, no, you can probably one point, it'd probably be like a 1.4 or something, something in there. And then, of course, obviously, that means this spur is level. So, or more likely, I'm going to have these three pieces of track here, here, and here be the grade that's down at a 2% or something like that. And have the turnout and both legs of this, sorry, it's highlighting all the wrong stuff, have both legs of this turnout level just for switching. So. And the reason I mention that is because you keep going up around this curve right here, across the lift out. Um, you will pretty much level off when you get basically to the edge of the bench work on this piece right here. Um, I'm not going to level off at the joint. It's still going to be going up. It'll, it'll get across the joint, still going up, and then it'll smooth out. But because obviously the whole the town area is going to have to be smooth. But once you get through this turnout right here, 
the reason I mention all those grades is because after this turnout, it splits. So the coal branch, which is again these three tracks that are highlighted in red, and the turnout. Um, well, and that track um, <laughs> is going to go up at a 2% grade, and then the main line, which is in the back, is going to dip down at 1.5. Now, there's a whole bunch of reasons for that. One, I do want some grades in here so you can actually kind of be able to actually play with, you know, if the branch line run is over X amount of cars, add help or, or run more extras sort of thing. Another big reason for me is the branch line gradually moves away from the track, which is straight against the backdrop, but they're also going down. So that's going to do a really good job of breaking up lines in the scenery. And it's going to do a really good job of just gradually disguising that main line so it doesn't just boom chop through a abruptly chop through a backdrop and then I have to kind of scratch me okay how in the world do I disguise this from a whole bunch of different angles the one spot over here where it does punch through the backdrop that's right here that again is flashing it's against this back wall well you two okay this wall right here is a room wall and this wall right here is a room wall so the only possible way you're going and I'll I'll put a line on here just see you you can have you would be able to get this viewing angle right there anywhere to this viewing angle well in between any one of those two all along these two sections track right here and ignore the blue line you're gonna have trees and bushes it's gonna disguise it and the only able where you even to even remotely see the whole even then just barely see it is going to be and all the high to track is going to be this sight line right here and even at that if you look at the angle of the let me delete that real quick. If you look at the angle of the curve compared to that angle of the view line, there's still 90 degrees. So it it's it's just gonna the train's just gonna disappear and it's really gonna look like it just disappears behind the tree and the lines split and go completely opposite directions. Now in reality, um, there was a whole marshalling yard here up until about Oh, from when it was originally built up into like 1889 something like that and then they moved those operations well actually no they didn't um, yeah they did they moved those operations oh, let me think no they didn't sorry for trying to remember the history here for a minute um, it was a marshalling yard for the little you know five six car trains off of the branch lines they forwarded the 10 car double head Mikados over to Logan, bigger trains to Columbus, and then big, big ones up to Fleet. Um, in my proto freelance, that was moved, so it's, you know, like that. Um, I might put a number four turnout there and spike it in one direction. To just give it that really weepy abandoned look. Um, obviously, <laughs> there's no way in Kingdom Come I'm getting a Y in there. Just never gonna happen. Uh, but by 1954, they had moved. Mo in reality, they had actually moved most of the trains to just going and coming from Logan, anyways. And at Logan, you've got turntable and everything so you just so it's not a big deal that I don't have the why it's not a deal breaker um, at that point the main basically goes down into staging and the branch line comes up and it terminates right here above staging um, the final there's other minor reasons but they all fall into the three big ones and the third big one 
is doing that will give me six inches over the staging yard um, for clearance. And I know some of you are like, you don't need that. The minimum clearance is three inch. Well, okay. No one's has a section of three inch clearance. And Forty's equipment is about sixteenth of an inch away from scraping its roof. I do have modern stuff. And I have some buddies that have uh okay, a little bit of heck up there. I completely forgot why I just <laughs> what the sentence was I just said. But yeah, um so the obviously six inch clearance here, um, and that's oh yeah, that's what I was saying, the three inches. The minimum, quote unquote, is three inches. Uh, but no one's there's a place where we do that and we're scraping car roofs on the 50 stuff. I have modern stuff. At some point I'm going to have a stack train and some wood chip cars, stuff like that. High cube box cars because I'm working on building my freight. So I kind of like to be able to come over here and run it and my coal drag. So, you know, I don't want to have to perpetually have those out at the club all the time and never be able to run them. Um, and like I said, some of my buddies have modern stuff, so want to be able to bring that over here and run it. So that's the whole reason behind that. And then another thing I'll do with the staging yard is I'm going to paint it bright white and put lighting in there. So it's going to be very well lit. So uh, that one, I can accredit it to BA Rail System. He did that with his staging yard and it looks awesome. So that's going to be the plan for that. Just spray paint it white, clean off the track, and you can actually see what's down there. And they're raising six inches. I can, hold on, how about these four tracks? I can get my hand to the backmost track and have clearance. Because obviously the coal mine town above is a branch, so it's all going to be hand throws, no. Uh, tortoises but I still got a lot probably a couple inches for wiring so you know by the time you take that out okay there's your yeah you're already down so I need separation um, so which is why the branch one is going to be the way it is so that is essentially the track plan. Operationally, I am paring it down substantially. I'm going to run one mine run and one local um, out of the yard here. The local will go in the staging because it represents the mix to new straight to um, Lancaster, which is not modeled. But I'll have one regular coal mine run. If I need to, I'll throw in an extra. And when it needs to, it'll work the town here. And then I'll probably have another job that works the local industries, which is what this track in the back is for. It's going to be locals. I'll, well, that won't be switched by our crew, but I'll probably have another local train. Um, that'll work the pulpit spur and switch the uh, engine engine yard. I'll think about that. You know, looking at this now, I might just add a, si a spur track over here so you can have a local that works these in this grain elevator and this area runs around the train and then comes back here something like that but um so that's the track plan pretty much and basic operation of course you guys schedule through freight schedule passenger through freight will drop stuff off you're going to have cold drag that will originate from logan yard and go into staging so yeah okay yeah it's a short run literally from here around the corner behind the roundhouse and in the staging.
yeah, not too much of a run. Go figure. So that's the track plan, that's the operations. Now keep in mind, it's the same general concept. There's a couple areas where this is tweaked, like I was saying with the whole position of the turntable and roundhouse over here. And then, like I said, what I might do with adding a siding over here. So let's move on to some of the other stuff. And uh, we'll have a look at the electrical side of it. Okay, so as you can see here, I've got a couple different lines. Um, this has changed. And you'll see this on a storage plan. Originally, I was going to put my electrical cap that I have over here. I'm not. I'm going to make that corner programming area. So it's moved over here. So obviously, everything's going to have to go out from it. But um, you'll notice I've even denoted where I'm putting the fraud juicers and the DS64s and the UP5 for the operators. Uh, and then Hostler will be in our position, forgot to mention. As far as electrical districts, the whole staging yard here is going to be district number one. Uh, the turn back right here behind the engine terminal is going to be the auto reverser, so that will be its own basically district and one big signal block. Uh, the whole yard area and everything here. And the main and siding around the end of the peninsula is going to be district number two. And then basically the rest of the stuff on this half of the room is going to be district number three. So three district, that's how it's going to split up. And you see down here. I've went ahead and marked where I got mono, a mono fraud juicer grade crossing pro. Uh, light switches here are that group of 120 volt the light switches I've got now. One will turn power on and off to the layout. The other is going to be the uh, work lighting overhead. So I'll turn on basically shop lights, LED shop lights for actual you know work lighting to work on the layout. Um, actually, no. It's actually not going to be LED shop lights, it's going to be interconnected LED lighting, but super bright, you know, it's for working on stuff. And then have softer lighting for the day and night in the transition, that'll be run off the Arduino. So that's pretty much the gist of it. Um, not too much else to look at, just show you real quick. Uh, this is how much I did, I even planned out under layout storage. This is moved, obviously, to this back corner. That's about the only thing that's changed out of that plan. Out of this plan, everything else is pretty much the same. You see, this whole wall here is magazines. I'm I've got a huge magazine collection. I need a place to store it. Um. Right here, this little area between the door to the bathroom and the door to the closet, which is doubling as my workbench. Originally, I thought I was going to put the programming track in there, which is why I then I decided to move it out here, back out in the layout room. But um, that's going to have three door storage unit underneath it, and uh, by cars I mean like vehicles, not rolling stock. But we'll have long stock road loads, details, street lights, all that sort of stuff. Uh, more magazines here, as you can see. We got an area that's loco storage, so I'm gonna might might have to build something custom into the bench work there. Probably the same with the rolling stock storage right here. Uh, it is gonna go there. I'm gonna build some final shelves, so this will be interesting, but lightly. Another spot for magazines, some more shelving. And then there's going to be an empty area and this whole rectangle. Uh, it's going to be basically a rectangle of plywood. I'm going to super glue some pi a pipe onto it standing upright. 
put casters on the bottom and I can just put my rail and my track, flex track and stuff in there for that. Um, again, their idea I got out of MR, it was from like an issue in 07 or something like that. Um, so flipping back to the original, I'll explain the electrical briefly. These are going to be the transition sections. So I'm going to have to actually figure out the circuit. But each of these track sections have rail joiners on both rails on both ends. So the concept is put the a double fold of toggle, toggle switch on here. When it's in DCC mode, when the branch is in DCC, both of these are powered. Okay, and they run like normal. When I flip it to DC, both of these sections are dead. So you've got three pairs of insulator rail joiners between the DC and the DCC. So that kills it. Now, usually, most of the time, about the only time I have DC on is when a, I got a buddy of mine that has some a good hunk of DC stuff when he brings it over, when I'm testing the engines before the decoder installs, etc., etc. Generally, though, when we do the the formal op sessions, it's going to be DCC mode. So, but either way, um, I'm gonna. I'm gonna just, I'm really going to try not to use DC at the same time I'm running DCC. I don't want to risk frying components here. But it just gives you two layers of buffer. Okay. Is really what it does. So that's pretty much it for the electrical. Um, I mean, yeah, that's the gist of it. So... Obviously, little things are different, like I said, because I've already started construction, and talking it over with Rich was the whole reason I put this little continuous run in the first place. I originally didn't have it. And originally, I was going to, as you can tell from the five tracks here, totally rebuild all the staging yard modules and donate them to the local museum to use the new model railroad layout we're building over there. Um... Yeah, you know, plans changed. Um, we found a way to keep those. So that part is slightly different. Engine terminal is slightly different just because stuff's going to have to shift. But the gist of this, the concept, is still the same. So, you know, um, yeah. I guess just, number one, excited you guys could see this. Excited I get to put it out. And I'm excited that we're building it. So, as you guys can tell, so a little late of a video, but that's what we're going for. So, as always, hope you all enjoyed. Please comment, like, subscribe, hit that bell icon to get notified whenever I upload a video. And as always, take care, God bless, and I will see you on the next one.